If you need some fun end of year activities to get you through the end of the school year, stay tuned, I got you covered. Hey friends, good morning or afternoon whenever you're watching this video. I have some really fun end of year activities that I want to tell you about today. And we do a lot of this type of stuff, usually the last month of school. We are in the last two weeks right now. So we are almost at summer. Like I can, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> and I'm ready to be done. So a lot of times our curriculum is finishing up and we have like holes in our day. Like we might be done with language arts, but we still have, you know, science, you know, whatever. So we need to fill up a little bit more of our day to be compliant with the state for like a full school day. So to make sure that we have those requirements and we have those hours, sometimes we have to add in extra activities. So here's some of the things that we add in, and these also make really good summer activities since most of them are totally screen free. So a lot of these are going to be some summer activities for you that you can kind of add in to your kids' day without, you know, it's not school, but it's, it's not like sitting in front of a, you know, a game system or, you know, they're doing something. They're doing something educational. So for the first one, I have a really techie kid. He's just, that's, that's just, that's who he is. He's just, he's just a very techie kid. He loves ham radios. He loves putting things together. Like that's just his personality. He likes to take things apart to put them back together. He's just like my father, to be honest. My dad is the exact same way. So when I was contacted by Circuit Mess to see if he would like to put together one of their systems, he was over the moon. He was like, yes, yes, please say yes. So I did, I said yes. So I got a free circuit mess system. I got a whole box from them for free to review for you guys, which I thought would be so much fun to tell you about because he loved this thing. Like he was so engrossed for days on this thing. So I'm gonna tell you what this is because if you have a techie kid, this is gonna be something that you're gonna love. So even though my kid is very techy, they have subscription boxes that are for beginners. Like this tells you everything. And I'm really glad to because some of the tools in this kit, he was totally like new to. Like this one had a soldering iron that came with it. He did not know how to use that. That was his first time using that. And if anything, it got to teach him how to use those tools. So I thought that was really neat. And one of the things that I found really cool about this box, and I've never seen this with any other system, they actually give you a fully assembled product. So you get two because they want you to see what a finished product looks like, how it's supposed to look. This was so helpful for him because he did not know what the finished product was going to look like or what certain things should look like. So he was able to kind of compare and contrast his to the finished product. So really neat. This car has a little screen on it I, right here. If you can see that the little glare from the TV, it uses like QR codes and things that come on these like really cool cards, like playing cards and the car moves around and does tricks according to what the QR code it scans tells it to do. It's so neat. He's been playing with this thing for days. So he got two of these cars and they sent him a little frog. This one was for younger age kids. The car was for a little bit older, but he got the, the, um, the frog too. And this one did not use any hot tools. This one, he just used like a little Allen wrench, I think, or maybe a little screwdriver. This is their little frog and it moves around on the floor. It is so neat. It's so cute. I love this thing. So these are STEM projects and it is a subscription box. So you're going to keep getting them. So you'll get one during the summer and it can be something that your kids can do to kind of keep the learning and the education going 
while they're not doing formal learning, you know, during the school year. Now, if you have a kid with a birthday coming up, I feel like these are great gifts to give. I have already been considering getting one for my son who has a summer birthday coming up. <laughs> I feel like one of their boxes would be a really cool gift for him so he could try doing them out again. He had a lot of fun putting this together. Now I'll be totally honest because he, with the car, he, he struggled a little bit just because he had never used a soldering iron before. So that was really new to him. So his car, because he had never used it before and he, he struggled a little bit with that, didn't exactly work out. He put it together correctly, like everything's correct on here. It's just the little soldering joints that he had a problem with and because of that, his car doesn't move. But the one that they gave him does, which is why I'm so glad that they give you a car that's already assembled and everything. So just in case there is a user error like it was on our part, and I will be, I will be uh, honest with this, this is not the company's fault, this is our fault, we put it together wrong. Um, because they give you a pre-assembled one, I didn't have to worry about his, like if he did put it together wrong because he has one that works, so it's okay. They do have different age groups too, so they have different subscription boxes based on the age of your kids. We did the older boxes because I have a 13 year old, so you know, it makes more sense for him to have the older one, but I'm so glad that they also included this one. This one I think was honestly my favorite. Just watching it, it was just, it cracked me up. And this one is a nine and up on the box. And it's something that kind of keeps their hands going, keeps their brains going. I love these things. I hope that I can work with them again in the future. Huge thank you to Circuit Mess for sending that to us. We totally enjoyed it and we are so thankful that you guys um, found us and sent, the, sent this box to us. Let's talk about some of the other things that we do during the summer. We do a lot of these type of activities. Like my son does his ham radio type of stuff for, you know, his own hobbies. We have a lot of like STEM type of stuff going on in my house. I feel like that's a pretty active thing. This total, the, the little um, circuit systems fall under STEM. We do a lot of those type of activities and I feel like it's really fostered his love of electronics. <laughs> so. There are things out there that they can do that are electronic that are not video games. So we don't have video games in my house. I know that that's like a huge thing that people think is so weird and I get so many nasty comments on the internet because I don't give my kids video games. But um, no, we don't have a game system in our house. We don't have like a Nintendo or um, an Xbox or whatever the, the latest one out there is. We don't have one of those. So we have to find other things to do. But one of the things that we do, and we're not a totally screen free house. I will, I will say that up front. We do have screens. We watch movies, we watch TV, that type of thing. Um, but my kids don't have phones and we don't have video games. So we lay in some kind of, we, we land kind of in the middle with that type of stuff. One thing that we do a lot is we watch history documentaries. We have several subscription based type of like streaming things on our TV. We don't have cable, but we do have some subscription type things. And one of the things that we do a lot is we watch history documentaries on television through those uh, streaming apps. I really enjoy this. Like I watch World War II documentaries for fun. Maybe it's because I'm a military wife, but we just naturally like a lot of war documentaries and things like that, a lot of history documentaries. I don't know, maybe that's why. But we do watch a lot of that stuff in my house and we typically enjoy it. It's just something that we watch as a family and um, my kids really like it. They love like those documentaries of uh, different military members from different battles and things like that, like talking to the camera and telling about, you know, different battles or different wars and things like that. We watch a lot of that type of stuff. I think that those are fine. Like I have never had a problem with any of those and because they're made for television, they're not overly violent like like a movie would be. It's not it's not saving private Ryan, let's put it that way. I saw that in theaters <laughs> a long time ago. Um it's not like saving Private Ryan for television or anything. Usually they're a little bit more tame, so I can usually trust that the violence isn't gonna be like over the top like it would be in a movie. But um, a lot of them are 
our very good educational type of programming. So we do like to watch that type of stuff during the summer too. Another app, the Answers app. If you have a science kid like I do, my techie kid is my science kid, he loves the Answers in Genesis app. And you can get that for your television. We have it on our Apple TV. He loves the zoo show on there. There is a, there is a, a show about a zoo that he just loves. He also loves the show Hide and Seek. And is it is it Hide and Seek? Oh my goodness, like it's too early for me to think of this show. It's not Hide and Seek, it's Hike and Seek. <laughs> it's too early. I'm, I'm filming before I actually have any caffeine in my system. Okay, Hike and Seek. He loves that show and it's just about the host who goes to these different parks and things all around and he talks about creation and about different animals and it is really, really cool. For my kid who loves animals, like that's like one of his absolute favorite shows. He's watched every single episode and every time they come out with a new season, he's so excited. There's a lot of different programming on there. There's a lot of programming for very young kids. He is kind of in the middle. There's not as many shows for kids in the middle, like, you know, teenagers, but like, I don't want to watch a whole documentary on Darwinism type of age, you know, like, like conference type material. I hope that they put more things on there for those, um, those kids that are kind of in the middle, but my husband and I, we like the, uh, the conferences and things like that. We love some of the debates that are on there. There's a lot of really neat shows on there. If you have animal lovers, if you have kids who love science, that's a really, really fun show, or that's a really fun app to get. And it's all educational, all creation based, all biblically based content. Highly recommend the Answers app. Now, if you want your kids actually doing some practice, of different things like math and, and you know science things like that they're secular okay I'm gonna say up front these are secular resources but we use the math on there because usually the math doesn't get into the weeds too much unless it's like a word problem but for math we do IXL and I know Khan Academy has some stuff now we don't really use Khan Academy but Khan Academy I believe is free IXL is like $9.99 a month and we've been paying that since we've been homeschooling. My kid actually used it when he was in public school and I liked it so much that I kept it just for the extra math practice. And when their math is over with, I keep them doing IXL for extra practice during the year. Totally works out. So like I don't, like I'll cancel the subscription like all throughout the school year and I'll pay for it during the summer and then I'll cancel it again and then we'll come back around. I have them do IXL a couple times a week and usually we have a much smoother transition into math during uh, the, the beginning of the school year. It's not nearly as difficult for the kids and they don't struggle. So I love that and it just kind of keeps them doing something a little bit more educational than, you know, it, most things that they would be doing. So we do like them. We do like IXL and I do have to pay for that one, but you know, it's $9 a month. I don't really sweat it because I'm only paying for the math. And then there's also Con, and Con is, is free, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, the last thing I will say, and this is something that my youngest child does a lot, we finish our book lists. We have usually like a stack of books that we get throughout the year, and most of the time we don't finish it. But at the end of the year and into the summer, I do try to get my kids to finish their book lists, to read more books. Last year I felt like was the year of Lord of the Rings and it was like a Lord of the Rings summer in my house. This year I don't know what it's going to be. I have to look and see. But this year we have Kindles and Kindle Unlimited. So even if they do finish, I'm going to have extra books packed onto their Kindle. I love Kindle Unlimited. If you don't have a KU subscription but you do have a Kindle, look at the KU subscription if you have big readers. Like I pay... I can't remember if it's 11 or $14 a month, but it's so worth it because I buy oodles of books. You guys see how many books I read? My youngest child reads faster than I do. We burn through books. It is so crazy how quickly we can go through a stack of books in my house. So it's worth it. 
especially because I'm running out of space to put these books, I'm gonna end up just like piling books on the floor throughout my house at, at some point. My husband has talked about putting bookshelves like all around the ceiling in the bedrooms because we just have run out of space. So look at KU if you have a reader or if you're a reader yourself. It saves me so much money because if you have the subscription, a lot of the books on there are in the, the Kindle Unlimited subscription and I can just get them for free and then return them to the library. It's like an online digital library for your Kindle. It's really neat. So highly recommend that. But hopefully this gives you some ideas of things to do that are educational based to do like at the end of the school year into the summer. These are things that we do pretty much almost every single year and it tends to work out really well for us. And I love that it just keeps my kids kind of engaged in learning without doing, you know, just kind of like mind numbing things like video games. Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to read what you guys do in your family. All right, I will see you in the next video and I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Happy homeschooling.